Once more, James made his way to see the lady who had taken a special place in his heart. He lived in Crewe, but had never visited a sex worker in his hometown. He didn't want to get a reputation on his own doorstep, so to speak. Manchester had become his spot where he went to get his jollies. When he arrived at Piccadilly Station, it was packed with commuters, unsurprisingly, it now being early evening. It was about a 15 minute walk to Mia's place if you took a leisurely stroll. James felt good, in the right kind of mood for some kinky action. But a sudden chance encounter changed this. Oh hello Jamesy, fancy seeing you here, said a voice from amidst a small group of women. It was Lizzie from work. James was assistant manager at a well-known supermarket chain. And Lizzie's boss, technically speaking, though she didn't view him as such. She went on. What brings you this way, sweetie? She was a small blonde lady, almost always smiling. Not too bright, but a decent sort. Um... It's me sister's birthday this weekend, just searching for a couple of presents, you know. Might treat myself to something as well, James replied. How sweet, ah. Oh. Girls, I work with this chap here, this is James, said Liz, who proceeded to introduce four young things who didn't seem too interested. Well, I won't keep you. I've got to get on myself. See you tomorrow, matey. Bye, bye, bye. And with that, Lizzie was on her way. She had clearly had a couple of drinks already, and James thought to himself that he really would not like to run into his employee and her dizzy friends later tonight. This chance meeting had thrown James somewhat. It had flustered him. He didn't enjoy lying, but was able to do it quite easily when put on the spot carried on towards Mia's trying to gain his composure. As James got to within 20 metres of Mia's door, the anticipation grew. But then her front door violently swung open and out stepped a large shaven-headed individual who slammed the door behind him with such force that it startled two old ladies standing close to James at the bus stop. The aggressive man then crouched to look through Mia's window. He pointed his finger and shouted something with forceful anger in a language James wasn't familiar with. The man then stomped away down the street in the opposite direction to James, who now felt concerned for Mia's safety. Despite this, James hung back and weighed his options. He opted to send Mia a text asking if it was okay to come over. Her immediate response was, Yes, I'm waiting for you, dear one. Kiss, kiss. He proceeded to the door and rang the bell twice. Mia was waiting behind the door and opened up straight away, greeting him with, Hey, baby, come, come. She seemed fine, to James's relief, although... Her makeup was noticeably heavier than usual. She looked gorgeous in her lingerie and her black leather boots. Her jet black hair cascaded down her back almost to her hips. James wanted badly to touch her. He politely declined the offer of a drink and they headed for the bedroom. She could see he was hard already. Mia ordered him to take everything off and sit on the bed. I'm going to give you a strip tease. No touching until I say, baby. James did as he was told. She held his gaze as she hit a button on the stereo. The room now filled with what sounded like 1970s Italian porn music to James's ears, which he found amusing but managed to contain his smile. She moved her hips to the music and smiled softly. 
She looked James's body up and down. She teased the removal of her bra. Her breathing slowed and she turned, giving James a view of her ample bottom. She moved closer now. James wanted to touch himself. Now she moved in real close and placed her fingertips on James's shoulders, sending electricity through his body as a wave of pleasure. Thunderous banging on the door, fear gripped James. For a moment he couldn't move. Then he stood and made a move for his clothes. Mia stopped him with her gentle hands on his chest. She too was scared, but was far more composed. It's okay, baby. The prick will go away. Please sit. Relax. Mia's words only slightly took the edge off James's heightened state. After a couple of minutes, the banging stopped. The question needed to be asked. Mia, who the fuck was that? Mia looked out of the blinded window, peering onto the street. That was my business manager, a thoroughly distasteful man, but not entirely without his uses. Don't worry about him. James wasn't given any time to digest Mia's words. She pulled a small bottle, a vial, from the bedside cabinet, uncapped it, and took a huge sniff. Her eyes fluttered in the back of her head, and she let out a groaning exhale before sitting next to James. She shoved the vial under his nose and ordered, big sniff, go. He complied. Within seconds, his heart had slowed by half and his head was swimming in chemical pleasure. She shoved him down on the bed, removed her underwear and assumed the 69 position. She jammed her cock into his mouth and begun to violently suck his. Two minutes of rough oral and James exploded. He couldn't possibly have lasted any longer. She cleaned him off, helped him put on his clothes, and sent him on his way with a kiss and a come back soon. She sat and cried for 10 minutes after he had left. An emotional release which always helped. James was left with a headache as he made his way home and a feeling of dissatisfaction, uncomfortable self-reflection was the order of the moment. Back at his flat in Crewe, James's thoughts turned to Mia's so-called business manager. He seemed dangerous and unhinged. Was this man a threat? To my Mia's safety, what could I do if he was?